tremendous mid-range shooter, and now you've really got it going from three-point range. What are you doing here to you know, get so hot? And, and you know, how have you kind of added that to your game, I guess? I mean, honestly, just taking what the, the defense gives me. Um, I always try to be, be aggressive when it comes to that, but just taking what the defense gives me and, and, and putting myself in a position where they're, they're respecting it. Can you kind of tell you <laughs> how you're, you're able to step back, uh, you know, quick moves on guys and step back and create space? I mean, do you think, you know, can't catch them in switches, he said. So is that what you're looking for in those spots? I mean, if you got a, a big that's kind of slower on you versus a guard that's – I'm a little faster. I think it's easier to take advantage of the big. So, you know, throughout the game, trying to look for that, you know, look for that mismatch and attack it. Do they go under on you a lot? Of I mean, out of respect for your mid-range game. They mix it up. You know, um, there's no consistent. Um, there's no. Cons there's nothing consistent. You know, it's not a, a, a under every time or over every time. I try to, you know, if they go over, I, I mix it up. They go under. I, I try to make them pay. So it's, it's just about respecting the game. You yeah. expressed a lot of confidence in yourself recently you know, about the All Star and so on. But when you get NBA Player of the Week, you know what does that do in terms of adding to, to that? Man, that's a blessing. Um, I, want, I guess I want to thank God for that. You know, putting me in a position to to, um, to do that. My teammates, you know, the coaching staff. Um, I want to keep going. You know, it's something you can really you know take time and appreciate it. You know, right now as Player of the Week. But um, I think we got bigger goals in mind as far as, you know, the next game, taking each game, putting that our main priority and, and, and taking advantage of it. This uh, Sacramento <laughs> team, they played with pace and pretty much run on everybody. Even when they lost, they scored and run on people. Was this this fourth quarter, was this just a matter of you guys getting back? That much yeah. Better? Don't even worry about matching, just get back first? Yeah. Uh, we're halfway through the season, so you kind of know what teams – strengths and weaknesses are you know we knew that was a strength we've seen it i've watched it um, i watched them do other teams like that so we want to make that a you know focal point of our defense to get back and and make plays following up on your step back threes you talked about it being hardened esque um you know more larger you said being what being hardened hardened esque like james harden wow um uh, <laughs> so what, what does that mean to you for that kind That's of comparison uh, you know and um kenny sort of believing in you what, what, what does that mean to you as a player I mean, first have your coach, you know, having that trust and confidence in you to, to do stuff like that. I, I think it's, you know, I think it's a great feeling to have, you know. Um, I mean, but on your word, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a word. I try to you know, try to create my own trend and my own thing. But you, you got players like that great in this league. You can take something from them anytime. So um, that's what you guys see. Let's go with it. D'Angelo, before the season, I would have told you that you were in all-star consideration. Rody and Jared could be rising stars in Joe in the three-point contest. Spencer. What would, what would you, and Spencer, too, for the skills. What, what would you have said to that um, at the start of the season? First of all, when I was asked if I should have been an all-star, I should have let you guys answer it for me instead of um, me being a confident guy and expressing it myself. But um, I, I'm just a confident dude. I think we got a lot of guys over here that, that are playing up to that, that speed and, and deserve that credit. Like you said, we just named everybody that deserves that. And, um, I mean, we'll see. Time will tell, you know, but um, if I don't make it, I don't think we'll lose a beat or they don't make. I don't think we'll lose a step at all. I think we're really trying to get this going as a team. Regarding Joe specifically, the way he moves off the ball is underrated. How, how does that change the offensive dynamic for you guys, especially you being the primary playmaker for these guys? Underrated. Um, when, you, when you got a guy like Joe every night, teams are he's on the scout report as a shooter. But um, his cuts and his slashing goes underrated. You know, you, it's easy to take a, a shooter out the game, mm -hmm. just deny him and, and, and be on top of every screen that they're, they're involved in. But when he cuts back door and he cuts off your pick and rolls and, and stuff like that, it goes unnoticed. D'Angelo, you guys started the season 8-18. and 18. Since then, you've played <coughs> 17 of the last 22 games. What was the, the turning point, and what, have, what can you see has been the difference between those two stretches? Mm. Turning point. Uh, we had a film session. I would say that you know our vets kind of, you know, kind of put us in our place and, and and established that. And I think that's that was the you know the takeoff point right there. Guys believed in each other. Guys were two feet two feet in on uh, on each other's success, and, and we kind of had a, a better better clue on our, what our roles were. So um, honestly, I think that was it, and we we've been we've been moving forward ever since. Okay. On that note, how do you and Spencer balance? basically leading the fourth quarter offensive charge. Sometimes it's him, sometimes it's you. Yeah. Um, I feel like we're both capable. We're both capable, and we're seeing that we can both do that, you know, in the fourth quarter. Um, 
he, I, I would say he's, he, he can get to wherever he wants. You know, he can get in the lane when he's hot, that's trouble. You know, and the same thing, you know, vice versa myself. I think we're all putting us, ourselves in a position to, to complement each other on the offensive end whenever it comes down the stretch or we need a play, we need, we know where we're, where we're going for. So um, it just makes, the, makes it that much easier for us. When you guys took charge at the end of the third quarter and then dominated the fourth, does that reflection <laughs> like a, a new level of confidence? Um, and maturity by this team. Yeah, I mean, just poise. Um, I mean, I, I would say we always had the confidence, you know, just seeing that that it's, it's kind of working in our favor now, you know, the way we're going about things, I think it's the sky's the limit for that. To uh, Bill Parcells and Pat Riley, two guys that were pretty successful here, in the city. they both said that for a team, a championship team, I mean, the players eventually are going to have to take ownership of it. Mm-hmm. Um, this is going back to the film session, this is kind of an example of that, I mean, this isn't like coaches getting on somebody. This I mean, they did their part too, but the mm-hmm. simple fact that the players have to, you know, speak up as well. So I would definitely, I definitely agree with that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you guys. Okay.